I did not graduate magna cum laude, 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 okay, I don't know. Hello, how are you? Welcome back. I hope that you're doing well and staying safe. Since my last video, I finished my first year of grad school. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. But before we talk about anything about today's video, I have a lot of announcements to make. Number one, I now have a writing, editing, and coaching service. So if you want your resume, a paper, a personal statement looked at, send it to me and I will gladly look at it. Um, all that information is on my website under the services tab. I also started an Instagram page titled Black Women in Higher Ed, which celebrates Black Girl Magic in Higher Ed. So if you just graduated, if you're in grad school, if you're in college, send me your details and I will gladly highlight you on our page because we need more Black Girl Magic spread throughout the world. Um, what else? I think that's it for now. So that wasn't a lot of announcements. Okay, whatever. Today we're going to be talking about how I got into grad school. I did not have a high GPA in college. I was never on Dean's List. I did not graduate magna cum laude, 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 okay, I don't know, or summa cum laude, I didn't have any of that. Um, but yet, I got into one of the top public health programs in the country. So, I'm gonna tell you how I did that. And I'm just gonna give you some tools for applying to grad school and just getting into grad school, especially if you don't check all the boxes because I definitely did not. So step one, choose a program. Think about, you know, which classes was I really good at in college and which classes would I want to learn more about. With that said though, I would highly suggest that you do your research because a lot of times, a lot of people are like, yeah, you know, I just really loved this class in, in college. I totally want a master's in this field. And then the reality is there's really not a job in that field. And I'm not gonna lie to you, grad school is really expensive. So unless you're like getting a full ride, I, I really suggest that you look up jobs in the field because it's great that you're gonna finish with a lot of knowledge in a certain area, but the bills still need to get paid. So choose a program, but do your research and make sure that there is a career in that program. Next thing that I would suggest is to look up professors. Too often, um, people will apply to schools because like it's ranked top 10 blah 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 but it's cool to go to a top 10 school but if you go there and all the professors are terrible in terms of like they're not people who really care about you they're not people who really want to invest in what it is that you are doing I personally don't think that it's the best place to be. You know, when I was applying to grad schools, I reached out to um, professors at all the schools that I went to. And one of the schools that was ranked really, really high, actually, a lot of the um, professors, they never reached out to me. Like I sent them, you know, like, oh, like I really think that you're doing really cool work here. And, you know, can I get more um, information about what you're doing? They never replied to me at all. And it was the school that was actually ranked higher than the school that I thought like had like a good rep um, that I met a professor there who really cared about me. She was a black woman, which was awesome. But she like really took the time to talk to me, to give me information about what she does and the program. And that for me was beneficial. Um, so definitely look at the professors and see what kind of research that they're doing because it's one thing to go to the school, but you are also learning from these professors and you wanna learn from people who are actually doing work in fields that you care about. Another thing that is actually tied into talking to the profs is if you meet them and you guys click really, really well, they can advocate on your behalf and be like, yo, I want her. Like I want her as a student in my program. So that's another reason why you should reach out to professors. I would say the next step is to choose your um, recommenders. So these are the people who are going to be writing your letters of recommendation. Too often, 
students who are like, I'm gonna, you know, reach out to the professor who I got all A's in their, in their class, or, you know, I did really well on these assignments for this I'm a professor, so I'm gonna reach out to them. Now, now that's great, but I would suggest asking a professor who really knows who you are and can talk about you as a person to write your letter of recommendation. I think I had a professor, like, I think I got like, a B minus in his class or a B and he was like I will gladly write you a letter because he and I had a relationship where he knew who I was as a person and so he could write me a really good letter because he could go beyond she did well he could really tell who I was as a person and I think that you know it sort of gets old to like read off oh like they got A's in this class okay cool but what is it that makes you so special like why is it that this school should choose you as a person and having a professor who can talk about who you are as a person really sells so yes if you want to get a professor who you did really well in their class but i would also suggest getting a professor who really knows you as a person now next thing schedule your gre and take it because that's just a required step in the process um Next step, this is my biggest thing. Write a bomb personal statement. This is where you can shine. Like this is where you can tell them, this is who I am, this is what I care about, and this is why I belong in this program. I talked about how my dad was my uh, superhero. I talked about how his work in um, public health what like laid the foundation for the work that I want to do. I talked about how my upbringing um, is sort of tied into who I am and what I want to do in the lives of others in the future. Um, I think that my personal statement was really what sort of gave them a glimpse of who I was. I told them this is who I am this is the life that I come from and this is what I want to do in the future and I believe that me being here at this school will help me propel into what it is I'm called to do. Write a bomb personal statement because that is what really sells. Last and not least, actually that's not the last thing. Next thing is pray. Listen, I as you all know believe in God and I'm gonna share with you a story in another video, um, another time, but basically, you know, I actually got on academic um, probation my first year of college, and the woman who, you know, was talking to me was like, well, you know, do you intend on applying to grad school once you're finished with, with college? And I was like, no, because at that point in time, I had no intention of doing anything after college. Um, and she was like, okay, great, because, you know, this might be, like, this might be the thing that keeps you from getting into schools. And I remember filling out my grad school apps and it asked you, you know, have you ever been on academic, on probation? Have you ever gotten in trouble at school? And I had to check off yes. And I was like, God, dude. <laughs> I don't know how we're gonna do this, but I need you to make a way. And he did. Um, so that's why, I mean, that's not the one reason why I believe in God, but that's one of the sort of ways that God has worked in my life. He definitely makes the impossible completely possible. Um, so I would suggest praying. Finally, come up with a plan B, right? So I did all of these things, but I also knew in the back of my mind, if I don't get into grad school, then I'll get a job, right? And this is where I intend to get a job. But I definitely start to think about a plan B because I applied to three schools. I did not get into two of them. And the one that was ranked highest out of all three was the one that accepted me. So one, I think that that's just a testament of God being at work in my life. Final point, and then I'm gonna leave, is write a supplemental letter. So I realized that my GRE scores were not it, my GPA was not it, I had a record. And I wrote a letter and was like, yo, <clears throat> I totally understand that my GPA, my GRE scores, and my academic record might make me seem like a questionable candidate, 
but if you give me the opportunity, I'll show you that I'm actually the bomb and I actually care about this. And my GPA right now in grad school is a GPA I've never had in my life. Um, didn't have it in college, didn't have it in high school, yet I have it now. Um, and I'm just so grateful that they gave me a chance, but I'm also grateful that I wasn't too prideful to write an extra letter telling them like, yo, this is why my grades were so low. This is why my, G my GRE score was what it was. Um, I wasn't too prideful and I just sort of explained myself to them and luckily they gave me a chance. Um, and I think that that's something that you should cons consider doing. Um, I think that grad school is hard. It definitely stretches you and teaches you a lot about yourself, but it's worth doing if you want to go into certain um, careers. If you have any questions about applying to grad schools, if you have any more questions about like which school should I apply to, which program should I apply to, should I go straight after college, should I wait a year? Those are all great questions and you can ask me and I will of course respond to you. Um, in the meantime, chase purpose, build confidence, and love yourself. Bye.